feet are asleep again. <laughs> This ha I, I talked about this in the beginning of my first Bellish video. This happens every time when I sit on the floor. My feet are just dead. <laughs> Absolutely asleep. Uh, whenever I, does any, that happen to anyone else when you cross your legs? It just cuts off circulation and it's just like, oh, so uncomfortable. <laughs> Mothnet's knitting channel. Uh, this is not a podcast, so I'm not gonna do my normal welcome to the Cozy Mothnet's podcast spiel. Here we are on the floor of my knitting room, <laughs> and uh, I am here to talk to you guys about a project that I've been working on since August, <laughs> and uh, probably a little bit longer. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I've been working on it since August. <laughs> like the time, <laughs> the passage of time, I like can't keep track of it. So back in August, I was um, already itching for uh, the fall season to start. I'm um, like, okay, uh, my birthday is in July. So I'm like, okay, summer's over. My birthday's over in July. So now it's time to get to <laughs> fall time. I'm ready for uh, the leaves. I'm ready for the coziness. I am ready for the huga. I am ready for the, um, the spooky season. I'm just ready for it to start. Um, and how does one prepare for the fall season to start? You scroll aimlessly on uh, Pinterest and fill up your your Pinterest boards with fall uh, themed um, posts. <laughs> and uh, a common theme that came that was coming through my Pinterest posts, um, uh, especially in terms of um, clothing items, were um, cardigans, big oversized cardigans and many people know me as the cardigan queen. <laughs> I wear uh, a cardigan every day to work. Um, cardigans have always been a staple in my wardrobe since I was in high school. Um, I just really loved the, I really love the shape of cardigans, the feel of cardigans. Um, they give me the librarian vibes that I've always been going for since I was in high school and you know now that I got that master's degree in library science um, you know, guy dressed like a library, 24 librarian, 24-7. But yeah, there's just something about a big old oversized cardigan that screams uh, fall vibes to me. <laughs> and especially a, um, you know, a cardigan get, that can be used uh, interchangeably with all different kinds of outfits. While I was, you know, contemplating my fall wardrobe, um, I got an email from the team at Bellish <laughs> and uh, they asked if I wanted to uh, collaborate with them again and I immediately knew what I was going to cast on. As soon as I got that email, I knew exactly what I was going to do. So this video is sponsored by our pals over at Bellish. Bellish is a free pattern generating app available for iOS that helps makers of all experience levels create a customized pattern from start to finish. From writing the pattern itself, to buying the yarn, to applying the finishing touches to your project. With its beautiful and easy to navigate interface, Bellish helps knitters create garments and accessory patterns for both children and adults. There are also fun little elements in the app that help you along in your journey to create a pattern made especially for you and your goals. If you've been following me for a while, you know that um, I have worked with Bellish already in the past. Um, I part with, partnered with them back in the summer where I made a pair of shorty socks and uh, the whole process I just loved. I, you know, the, the app is beautiful. Um, I love the minimalistic design of it. Um, it's not, you know, super flashy in your face, but it's still, you know, colorful enough to get your attention. Um, the patterns are easy to follow. Creating the pattern is super easy um, and fun to play around with. And um, I, you know, that I am a, I am a, um, I'm an advocator for Bellish. Um, I um, encourage my followers to use them. And that is my own opinion. That is my own thought that um, 
I will say that um, this is a sponsored video. Uh, this is a paid promotion, but all my thoughts are my own. I'm not going to just go out there and not be honest with you guys when it comes to um, the things that I show you, the things that I promote to you. Um, I am being completely honest here and I'm not just saying things because they are paying me. I uh, genuinely love this app and uh, already have plans for using it more in the future. So when Bellish reached out to me uh, again uh, in the late summer um, asking me if I would collaborate with them again, uh, I knew exactly what I was going to do. Um, it you know, I, there was no hesitation. I knew exactly what I was going to make with them. And uh, I was ex so excited to get started. Uh, so I decided to make an oversized cardigan. This video is a little bit different from my other bellish video where I, um, my last bellish video, I just kind of like told you about my thoughts of the app and how I, um, and, um, told you about my process of uh, knitting the socks instead of showing you the process uh, mostly but this time I decided to take you along on the journey with me kind of like a knit with me uh, video um, where I showed you the process of uh, me knitting the entire garment um, from start to finish pretty much um, from cast on to blocking and even uh, trying it on um, so from from here on is um, uh, just little clips of me uh, knitting uh, knitting my garment, which I call the uh, um, which I call the most cozy cardigan. And uh, just sit back, enjoy yourself. Um, it's gonna be a little knit with me. I'm gonna do some little bit of voiceover, um, but um, you know, pick up your knitting, grab yourself, you know, a nice you know drink, whether it be you know tea or coffee or water or you know a martini if you will um, or wine um, and just uh, enjoy this little knit along with me and I will see you at the end of the video. Okay, so here I am, sort of the dreaded ribbing portion of the cardigan. Uh, this cardigan is uh, bottom-up construction and is knit flat over 16 inches before splitting that big old rectangle into three sections. Uh, now, I'm, no, I'm not the only one who dreads the ribbing portion of a garment project. Um, it's only two by two at least, so at least it's not one by one. Um, 
In this clip, my husband and I are sitting in our bedroom watching the new Suicide Squad movie. Uh, I believe I recorded this back in early August. It's been it's been a while, and now it's October. Uh, we were watching the new Suicide Squad movie. Um, it is a wild, wild movie. Um, as someone who read the comic books, um, uh, I thought it was really enjoyable. Um, highly recommend if you don't mind uh, gratuitous violence. Um, um, but the writing is amazing and incredibly entertaining. Uh, eight out of 10, I would say. Uh, but anyways, this is a knitting video. Um, but also, um, I'm sure my Canadian friends have noticed that I am wearing a, a uh, Austin Matthews Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, hockey jersey. Um, so kind of a funny story as to why I am <laughs> wearing the hockey jersey of a team that I do not, um, like officially you know like like I don't you know I'll cheer them on but I'm not like a fan fan you know um so around this time last year my husband and I decided that we wanted to get into um into hockey I always love going to our local uh Flyers games here in Philadelphia and um I just wanted to learn more about it so uh so my husband and I decided that we were going to do a little uh fantasy hockey draft um and my husband knows already knows a whole lot about hockey and he would answer a bunch of my questions which I greatly appreciate um but uh for our hockey draft we decided that um whoever's team like won <laughs> the loser would have to buy the winner uh the jersey of their best player on their team so I ended up winning <laughs> and uh, Austin Matthews was my uh, my best player so that is why I have this little jersey um it's kind of it's kind of funny but um but yeah it's my my little trophy for my first uh fantasy hockey uh situation and I'm trying to convince my husband to do it again this year but he <laughs> he's saying no because he's afraid that he'll lose again to me <laughs> um but uh but speaking of hockey do any of you guys watch hockey do you watch any sports or do you guys like stay away from that um which I totally understand that's fine um uh, this year I'm actually going to be um cheering on the Seattle Kraken um I was in uh, Seattle this time last year when they announced their, um, or in August last year, when they announced um, the name and the logo, and we saw them building the ice rink in Seattle, and um, it was just like, you know, a big deal, and I thought it was just exciting, so I'm like, you know what, I'm going to cheer them on. Um, so, but but yeah, anyway, do you guys <laughs> watch hockey um, uh, or any sport? Um, my husband's a big football guy, he'll watch any sport really, but. But yeah, or do you just like, you know, you kind of stay away from the sports, um, you know, a bunch of mostly <laughs> men, you know, like running into each other or whatever. Um, I'm not a big sports person myself, but there's just something about hockey that I really enjoy. Um, so yeah, so I'll <laughs> enjoy uh, the nice music and I'll, uh, you'll hear my voice from time to time throughout this video and um, enjoy. Okay, so here we are a couple days later and I've made some progress on the giant beige rectangle. Um, I felt like this portion took absolutely forever, just knitting and purling back and forth. Um, I began to re remember why I don't knit cardigans. <laughs> um, I definitely prefer knitting in the round. Um, I'm way too afraid to knit a cardigan in the round and steek it. Um, maybe I should build up the courage and do that one day and maybe one day I'll own a sewing machine too um, but I have a few more fiber crafts that I want to master before I tackle sewing um, have you guys ever steeked a garment um, or steeked steeked a garment trying to enunciate on this uh, voice recording um, have you guys ever steeked a garment uh, how did it go um, it's very scary to me like I know like I see people do it and they just do an amazing job but like just the idea of like 
you know, taking a pair of scissors to your knitting um, is kind of uh, terrifying to me. <laughs> um, but I'm sure once I did it once, it would it would make sense, and um, I would do it all the time probably. Um, <clears throat> Ah, uh, yes, we have an obligatory blue sighting. <laughs> um, blue is not normally a snuggly dog. Uh, she is more of a, you are sitting in my spot, and now I will bother you until you get out of my way <laughs> um, kind of a dog. But um, on this day, she just really wanted my full attention for some reason and demanded that I snuggle with her. Um, <laughs> and I don't know why. Like she has, She gets into these moods where like, suddenly she'll be like no I want to snuggle with you like I must be like pressed up against you and um it, it's very sweet but like it can get annoying when you know you're trying to knit and you're trying to like get a project done but <laughs> but um your dog just like gets up all up in your face and is like nope must and then she she didn't like that like my knitting was draping over her face she got a little annoyed she eventually moved but um but enjoy these uh these few moments of her being the most pitiful dog In this clip, I am still chugging away at that rectangle. <laughs> um, I took this video during my August virtual knitting circle. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you might know that I host a virtual knitting circle once a month and have been doing so uh, every month since the beginning of the year, uh, minus a couple months in the spring. Um, I try to do it as close to the end of, I try to do this close to the end of the month um, and try to keep it around early afternoon, uh, Eastern Standard Time, that way our West Coast friends can join us in the morning and um our um our friends uh, across the Atlantic and Europe and all that can join us um in the evening um we have a great group of gals or a great group of pals I should say um who join us every month and we love to see new people come in and out um and if you don't you know if you're not really one to join in on the conversation that's totally fine there's plenty of ladies who are or not late. There's plenty of um, plenty of uh, makers who um, just you know sit back and you know like just you know just you know ravel in the <laughs> the company and um, you know we have a great group and everyone's super friendly and super welcoming. Um, so if this interests you, uh, just be sure to give me a follow on uh, Instagram at the Cozy Moth Knits, and uh, I like to post um, at least a week before um, my scheduled. Uh, virtual and at night and uh, I give all the zoom information um, and if you have any questions uh, you can always uh, message me over there Can you tell that I really like this shirt? <laughs> I think I wear it at least once more throughout the video. Um, 
I am getting close to the end of the rectangle at this point. Um, it is practically a blanket. It's super warm because uh, it's 100% uh, Peruvian Highland wool, so it's going to be uh, nice and snuggly. Um, it's getting to a point where I'm starting to affectionately call it uh, the beige blob. <laughs> um, the more I worked on it, the larger and more blobbier it became. And um, it was unrecognizable. Like if I, you know, it, it just looks like, like I said, a beige blob. Like it didn't really have a shape to it. Um, it was um, pretty wild. <laughs> and you'll see as, as the videos go by. Um, I unfortunately did not end up filming myself working the front and back panels. Uh, but the process is similar similar to working the bottom portion. Uh, you split the stitches into three sections and knit each section according to the, inst the instructions that Bellish gives you. Uh, the front panels have decreases for the neck and the back panel is worked flat. So here I am joining the shoulders. Um, I did stray from the pattern a little bit in this section. Um, Bellish has you bind off both front and back portions, then sew together the shoulders using a mattress stitch. But instead, I decided to do a three needle bind off, which just made more sense to me. So when I finished the front panels, I put the live stitches on scrap yarn, and once the back panel was done, I turned the garment inside out and worked the three needle bind off um, from the front left panel, then bound off normally along the back until I got to the beginning of the right panel and continued the three needle bind off from there. And of course, I gave it a little try on, uh, giving some real, uh, keeping watch over their flock by night, uh, realness right here. <laughs> uh, this is when I start to panic and wonder if the garment is going to turn out well or not. Uh, is it too big? Is the fabric too thick? How will the button band look? Um, when I block it, will it look okay? Uh. 
Ugh, does anyone else get those feelings when you try on a garment in mid-construction? <laughs> So my apologies, I also did not end up filming myself adding the button band to this garment. And good thing, because y'all, I was getting angry. <laughs> um, I am not a fan of picking up stitches, and I had to make sure that the count was perfect on each side. And whatever I did on one side, I had to do the inverse on the other. Uh, and then I had to add the buttonholes, and lord, it was a mess. <laughs> uh, I definitely restarted the band like five times. Then, um, because I didn't want a loose or floppy band, uh, I bound off normally, which of course made it tight and the band looked awful, like along the cast off edge, like it was like shrinking the band and like was lifting the front. It looked awful. Um, so yeah, it was rough. Um, <laughs> oh, and by the way, I never mentioned that this pattern, uh, you have to make three different bands like it's not all one band that you pick up on you know the bottom left corner and then pick up all the way up and around the neck and finish at the bottom uh the other corner um no there's three bands one for the left one for the right and one for the neck <laughs> um not a fan of that and then um once those three are done then you sew the three bands together to make it co cohesive so i understand what they're trying to do but um it I, that was not something I was very happy about. Um, so I ended up ripping back all the bands and redid, um, redid them with a the stretchy bind off. Um, it looked a lot better than I expected. I was afraid that it was going to be like wavy and floppy. Um, but it's, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was an experience. Um, but by the way, uh, I just realized that you can't see anything in this clip. <laughs> my, uh, my little stand is, um, is a blocking Ugh, is blocking my way. I am all. Uh, but at this point, I am working the first sleeve. Um, figuring out the sleeves was also stressful, let me tell you. Um, Bella said to pick up a hundred stitches around the armholes and I s and, um, and start knitting and um, and I could not, for the life of me, pick up more than 80 stitches for each arm. It was either going to be incredibly, like, I, it was, it was a mess. Like, I, I definitely cried over it. I was like, what did I do wrong? Um, but I was just like, you know what? I just couldn't. Like, <laughs> after attempt number seven, I'm not even exaggerating. I just ended up sticking with uh, the 80 stitches for each arm. And it just the decreases accordingly. Um... I mean, like, it was fine, but, like, I got the job done. Um, I don't know if you can see sometimes, um, but I like to use those uh, uh, bobble safety pins to mark where my decreases are uh, on the arm and then transfer them to the next sleeve to keep track of my decreases. Um, it makes the process of knitting sleeves uh, so much more enjoyable to me. Um, and it helps me keep track of how many decreases I've done on one arm and... Um, yeah, just being able to like visually see them like stick off of the the sleeve. I mean, you can you can look and see the decreases, but you know what I mean. It's just having having those little dangly guys hang off like it it um it really makes a difference. Um, so I'm filling this portion while on my September virtual knit along. Um, we talked about how uh, when knitting top down sweaters in the round, uh, we should just knit the sleeves before we finish the body. Um, now that wasn't conducive to this current project, uh, but definitely next time I knit a sweater, I'm going to give that a try. Um, uh, I feel like that would make the whole process so much more enjoyable, but we shall see because, you know, when you get down to the body portion, it's just, you know, TV knitting at this point, at that point, it's just like smooth sailing from there on. Um, so at this point, the cardigan is approaching max blobbiness. <laughs> it's getting heavier and more awkward to work with, uh, but the end is so close. I must persevere.
And oh look, we have just come full circle. Here I am back in my bedroom, embracing the green aesthetic. <laughs> I've just been digging green so much this fall. I don't know why, but um, this uh, was this past Sunday afternoon. I um, I, uh, I was still in my church clothes. <laughs> I just like rushed home because all I had to finish was this ribbing on the last sleeve. Um, I think I had about like, I think it was only like 12 rows like of regular knitting and then I had to do the ribbing but um because I was getting so close to the end I just wanted to finish it before the night was over and then weave in the ends um which did I didn't end up filming but that was that can be boring um and maybe some people get angry about the way that I weave in ends um but I was able to get all the like the I mentioned this in my last podcast, but the uh, Wool of the Andes by Knit Picks, they only come in 50 gram skeins, so you're connecting um, twice as many skeins. So as you can probably see, there's a lot of loose ends. So that took some time, and that took an entire episode of 90 Day Fiance for me to weave in all those ends, um, but it was worth it, and um and yeah, and you can see me uh, trying it on a little bit. Um, you know, look at all those ends. It's a mess. And I'm like trying like, I'm trying to figure this out, how it's going to look after I block it, after I sew those uh, two button bands together. I'm looking at the sleeves. The sleeves look a little interesting. Um, yeah, I'm just just trying to be okay with it and trying to say like, it'll block out. It'll block out. Um, I... Uh, but then like like I like kept going back and forth saying like oh no it looks like a mess and then also like oh no it's like super cute and oversized and just what I was looking for and um so yeah we shall see how that goes um the next portion is just a little bit of blocking so I tried to get some nice a little bit of blocking footage for you um you know, I added my little wool wash to my bathtub <laughs> because I don't have a sink or a bucket big enough to uh, <laughs> to block this monstrosity, this blob. Um, so I filled up my bathtub with uh, warm water and then I uh, did a little bit of wool wash, got a little sudsy, um, gently pressed down the garment into the water and I ended up letting it sit for about 15 minutes. Um, and then I uh, pulled it out of the bathtub, <laughs> ran to my guest room, and dropped that sucker onto um, onto the um, my uh, blocking mats, which are just um, four towels <laughs> uh, draped across the floor. And um, I did my best to uh, do a little bit of shaping and. Um, work on that, you know, getting the button band out there to make sure that it doesn't curl under. Um, that was, that is what I'm most concerned about. I don't want the button band to curl. Um, I might end up going in and steam blocking the band after all this too, to like reinforce it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so, so again, here I am just zhuzhing, zhuzhing the the blob um and it's now a uh, very flat <laughs> no longer a blob but it is now uh flat um but yeah and uh i think it took about 48 hours for the sucker to dry um i tried to squeeze out as uh, much water as i could without wringing it um but i also didn't want to like you know i didn't want um too much water to be wrung out i still wanted to be pliable you know um so yeah, the next clip uh, is, it should be uh, the finished garment and uh, with the buttons added on. where we started and uh, here it is my most cozy cardigan um, I'm already obsessed with it I um, 
when I took it off the mats for blocking and I sewed on the buttons. I was just so happy with how it turned out. It drapes beautifully. Like when I, when I wore it before I blocked it, it was kind of stiff, kind of, you know, a little bulky and I was kind of worried that it was going to be too chunky. You know, uh, this is knitted with worsted weight yarn and I was afraid that maybe it was going to be a little too thick. Um, but now that it's blocked and, um, you know, I've worn it a couple of times, you know, like took, taken it on and off a couple of times, sewed on the buttons. Um, it feel, it's like the perfect weight. <laughs> it's not super chunky. It like drapes really well. It's perfect. And I am so happy with the result. I'm so excited to wear this cardigan all the time. <laughs> People are going to get so sick of me wearing this. Um, but I am so, I'm just over the moon with this with this design. I feel like it's perfect. I love the drop sleeves. Um, I used to be, you know, more of a fan of a raglan constructed sweater, but I'm, you know, learning to love the drop sleeve sweater more. And, um, yeah, I just can't, you know, I can't, I can't say enough how much I love this sweater and how much I, I know I'm going to wear it <laughs> all winter and, and, uh, you know, all year round, uh, maybe not in the summer, but, uh, but all year round, this is definitely going to get some wear out of it. Um, but I just want to thank Bellish again so much, one, for sponsoring this video and two, for creating an amazing app that helped me create this sweater that, um, that I'm definitely going to get so much wear out of. And yeah, and at the end of the day, making this entire thing only cost me about $40, <laughs> which is fantastic, I think, um, compared to like if you go to like American Eagle or um, I always use American Eagle as my standard because that's where I shop most of the time. And I feel like their, um, their product is very well made. Um, and like, you know, I still have sweaters from back when I was in high school that I still wear today and they're holding up very well from American Eagle. Um, but like if you were get to get something like this at American Eagle, it would be 60 or $70. So, uh, get to, you know, yes, it took a lot of time to make, but, uh, if I only, you know, um, if it only cost me $40 to make, like I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I used a Knit Picks wool of the Andes, by the way, I believe I mentioned that already, but yeah, if you haven't already, be sure to download the Bellish app. Um, it is, um, so much fun to work with. Um, currently it is only available on iOS, um, or, um, Apple products. They are currently working on, um, adding, um, uh, they are currently working on creating an app for Android. Um, and I know as soon as uh, this, they make an app for Android, and of course that takes time to make, and um, it's you know a little bit more difficult than making an app for iOS. Uh, but I know as soon as it's available to Android users, it is gonna blow up. I am just so excited to see, you know, like I'm even like talking to a couple of my knitting friends. I'm like, man, I wish that it was available on Android. Like I would use this all the time, like, and. I know, I know it will be used by a lot of you guys, and uh, but I know that's coming in the future. Uh, I know they're working hard on uh, creating that app so that it's available for everyone. Um, but if you do have an Apple phone, like an Apple product, whether it be an iPhone, iPad, you know, whatever, do be sure to download the app and um, you know play around with it, create your own um, your own patterns yourself. Um, if you don't have Apple products, you can always uh, go to their website, which I'll have linked below, and uh, the app will be linked down below as well. And you can look at their blog. Uh, they are working on getting my sock pattern up there soon. Um, so, you know, so keep an eye out for that. I will let you guys know about that. Um, and um, I definitely, you know, I've talked about this in the past. I do, I already have plans <laughs> on using uh, the Bellish app again in the near future, definitely before the end of the year. I already have some ideas and uh, I can't wait to talk to you guys about that again in the future. So I think I'm going to leave this video here. Um, I'm sure you're tired of seeing me <laughs> and this and my beige blob. Um, you know, now it's no longer a blob anymore, but maybe I'll continue to call it the blob because that's what I called it for many months. Um, but yeah, so again, I'll, um, I'll let you guys go. Thank you for letting me pop in for this quick little visit. Uh, you know, I always enjoy these visits, you know, having tea together, knitting together, talking about knitting together. I enjoy these special times that we have as pals. So, um, 
So again, thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, uh, be sure to hit subs the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers uh, by the end of the year. And if I end up hitting 2,000 subscribers, I am going to get a moth tattoo, which um, I know that's a, a kind of kind of a silly goal. But like, if you want to see me get a moth tattoo, I'm definitely going to end up uh, um, videotaping that. So, um, so if you want to see me get a moth tattoo, then uh, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Cozy Moth Knits and on Ravelry at Cozy Moth Knits. So I'll leave this here for you guys and I will see you again very soon in the future. But for now, stay safe everyone, keep knitting, and I will see you all later.